What's going on everyone? So this thrift store game hunting video is going to be a little bit different. The first half is going to be mostly thrift store stuff and even some other used game stores. But the second is going to feature footage that we captured at our usual flea market spot that I've been going to now for many, many years. I will give you a spoiler. The flea market in terms of quality has declined on a drastic scale and it's part of the reason I don't make those particular videos any longer. Part because every single time we go, it's it's just not good. We either don't find any games or the people are charging outrageous prices for essentially nothing. But we will talk more about the flea market and really other things later on. I was so excited when I saw this Crash Bandicoot for the PS4. Truthfully, I was confused as to why it was even here since the game didn't come out all that long ago by the time I recorded this footage. That is, up until I opened up the case and saw the condition of the disc. Wow. This is exactly why you always check your discs before you even think about buying it. I thought this was kind of cool, actually. I, I rarely ever come across racing wheels for the original PlayStation. This one even comes with the pedals. I considered buying this just for shits, but I had to really think to myself, okay, do I really need or have the space for something like this right now? No, not really. I know myself very well. I would end up buying this thing and it would sit in a bin for however many years. Plus, I haven't touched an original PS1 system in over 15 years. So yeah, that kind of makes no sense, at least for me. But still, very cool. I'm sure you've noticed, but there's been a lack of games at thrift stores lately. This one in particular always has a decent amount of stuff. The problem is that for whatever reason, this Goodwill prices their games higher than any other Goodwill in a 25 mile radius. Five or six bucks a game where everywhere else wants two or three. And it's hard to justify spending that when everything in here is so common to come across. So here we are at a half price bookstore. This is the first time I've seen them have some sort of a dedicated rack for clearanced out video games and there's actually a lot to choose from here. The prices were pretty damn good too for the most part, games were tagged down to $3 each. For PS4 and Xbox One games, I mean that's a steal. There's a lot of great games to pick up for that price as well, a lot of Batman games, Fallout 3, and the older Assassin's Creed games. There was even Payday 2 and XCOM for the 360. I ended up grabbing a small stack of Xbox One games, including a brand new Beast Quest, Dead Rising 3, Titan Quest, and a game that I think is vastly underrated, Bulletstorm. A few months later and I came back to this location, the clearance games were all gone, not exactly sure how or when they get clearanced out for that matter either. The regular priced games, half priced books is is really strange honestly. They either have overpriced games, standard used prices, or sometimes you find a game that is much cheaper than usual. Like those old Medal of Honor games are six bucks here, where that would be insane considering right down the road has like 10 copies of them and they can't get rid of them for just a couple bucks. Fallout 4 at $15 is also pretty high considering I bought this game at least a year ago for half that price. Army of Two 40th Day, however, is a game I've been searching for on the PS3 for quite a while now. Eight bucks, you know, it isn't terrible. I think the game goes for around 10 to 12 maybe. So I did end up grabbing it. Here we are at a five below. And to my surprise, there's Quite a lot of games here. This is the most games I've ever seen this store carry, and I'm not mad. There's some interesting things here like Rocket Arena, Deus Ex, Starlink, and a few others. 
They also had the Division 2 for Xbox One, which I decided against. If they had it on the PS4, I would have been all over it, but I never play my Xbox Online, so it would be a complete waste. In reality, I probably pick up my Xbox less than a half a dozen times a year, to be brutally honest with you. Now, I like this. I've always had a soft spot for these electronic keyboards, especially ones by Yamaha and Casio. This one here is a CTK2100, which I'm slightly familiar of. It's not really that old of a piano. I think it came out about 10 years ago, if I'm correct. And from what I understand, it's a pretty good starter piano. And it even features USB ports, MIDI support, and the ability to sample sounds which is pretty damn cool. I turned it on and it seemed to function completely fine. I didn't purchase it because even though I like this piano, it's really not all that valuable or desirable. I like the older electronic pianos from like the 70s to the late 80s personally. Okay, so that's all I have for the thrift store and other game store footage. Now, let's talk about the debacle that is the flea markets of late. Since this video and the last flea market installment that I put out over a year ago, we have gone to these flea markets, I think maybe five times now. And each time we've gone has been completely just dog shit. One of the flea markets started even charging for parking, something they've never done before, which isn't really a huge deal. If it wasn't for the fact that there's less than half the amount of vendors than there ever was. It may sound strange, but the vendors and even the shoppers of late are much shadier than they've been in the past. I mean, let's be real. Flea markets aren't exactly known for touting honest, clean, tidy sellers and, and people in general, but this was different. I, I guess it's really hard to explain without physically being there for yourself. Take this guy here, we'll call him Rock Dude. We walked into his booth that was filled with all sorts of rocks, gemstones, minerals, you know, that sort of stuff. The entire time we were in here, Rock Dude was eyeing us like a hawk, and he wouldn't stop shilling his merchandise. The way he was acting, the way he was moving, reminded me exactly of drug addicts that would come into my old place of work and just be extremely shady in the store, sometimes stealing, sometimes not. The entire reason we even walked into this booth is because Melissa is from Vegas, where this type of stuff is very common to come across. It's, I mean, it's readily available at like every single gift shop down there. Me personally, I know jack shit about this type of stuff, but Melissa, on the other hand, knows more than the average person. She also has a fascination for this type of stuff too, so that of course helps. The product that this guy was selling seemed way too good to be true, especially for the prices. Even I was able to catch on to the fact of that with my very limited knowledge, plus the stones that this guy had didn't even seem close to natural. Like. They were all way too similar looking to each other and way too perfect. I'm, I'm talking this stuff looked obviously mass produced by some sort of machine. It was way, way, way too obvious. <laughs> if you're into these things, these are, this is like the most economical thing I have right now. This is really high dollar, really high dollar <laughs> stuff. I mean, really, the guy, the reason she laughed is because she knew he was full of shit. I didn't know at the time, but she picked up a couple of the larger stones that she knows about personally, and she knew immediately just from picking them up that they were fake. She later told me that one of the dead giveaways of it being fake was that the larger stones that she grabbed didn't really weigh anything most economical thing I have right now. This is really high dollar, really high dollar <laughs> stuff. I mean, really, the guy, 
there's a girl next door to sell this piece for 30 bucks. Yeah. You know, I mean, for real, you know. <laughs> if you're buying rocks, you know, see right. what they got and come and see me because I guarantee they're gout. Economical? Okay. That's a backhanded way of thinking that we're cheap or thinking that we don't have money to spend. Economical? No, buddy. I just prefer not to buy bootleg shit. Speaking of rocks and minerals, this seller here has real shit. And the difference between this seller's and rock dude is night and day. This guy seems to know his shit and actually has somewhat of a passion for what he's talking about, unlike the last guy who kept calling things rocks. Kudos to this guy, by the way. He was super nice and his prices really weren't that bad. As we would roam around the flea market, yeah, we would come across a few sellers who had games like this guy who had a few stacks of stuff, but he wanted too much for what he had. I mean, Tetris for 15 bucks, that's just strange. He didn't have anything super uncommon or anything spectacular by any means. This other guy had a few smaller stacks of various games, most of which I had. At first he was trying to sell them for five bucks a pop, but later went on to tell me that he would sell them for three dollars each. I really should have grabbed those Cabela games. For whatever reason, they're becoming harder to come across, and I think they're actually worth a lot more than three dollars, but that was my fault. I think I was just so annoyed by Rock Dude that I shut my brain off from what was most important. How much are you trying to get out of the PlayStation here? 50? Okay. 50 bucks for a slim PS2 is actually totally fine. It looks to be in great shape, and she has a couple common games included. This would be a good deal for the right buyer, but not me, and she wasn't willing to negotiate on a price either. So, the laser got destroyed on my old PS2 Slim, so I am technically in the market for another console if I could get it for cheap. If not, I could just spend the 15 bucks on a new laser. It's super easy to replace on the Slim consoles, so really, anyone can do it. There is a reseller in one of the buildings at this flea market. I'm sure I've shown us stuff in earlier videos. This guy is nice and all, but man, I, I just can't justify the prices here. Some of them are way higher than other local pre-owned game shops. I've not asked about bundling or even asking for a cheaper price only because I don't see the point. I feel like if I were to ask, I would be insulting the seller because I would be offering almost half of what they're asking and I just can't bring myself to do something like that. Oh, Italian beef, caviar burgers, you know, kinds of body three dollars each. Five. Oh, what? No, thank you. Oh God, I shouldn't have to even say this, but buying cheap body jewelry from a flea market is a horrible idea. Unfortunately, that's all the footage I have from the flea markets, as depressing as it is. So, with that said, let's take a few moments here and talk about something. In the past couple of months, I've gone to a handful of game stores like GameStop, Disc Replay, and even Pawn Shops, and I've noticed that a lot of them have just been completely wiped out of their stock compared to like two years ago. Not only that, but the prices for games, especially used ones, seems to have gone up in some cases dramatically since the beginning of COVID. The strangest example is a game like Bomberman on the Nintendo Switch. Before COVID, I remember seeing Disc Replay wanting 15 bucks for it used. Now it's gone up to 25, but Walmart is selling it brand new in their value area for 20 bucks? I've seen Resident Evil 2 on the PS4 go up to I think 32.99 instead of 20 used at Disc Replay, or another general Example is like older, super common titles, Uncharted, Call of Duty, Battlefield. I could get all of those games on the PS3 or the 360 anywhere from a buck to at the most maybe three or four. They've all seemed to have gone up to like the $5 mark. Or in the case of Bad Company, I've seen disc replay in other game shops charge as much as 13 for it. 
So not only am I running into a problem of game stores having significantly less stock than ever before, I'm coming across price hikes in the gaming market. It's honestly so frustrating for me, both as a collector and a gamer. I have a hard time finding the games that I really want, and whenever I do, the prices are much more than what I'm used to paying, or that I'm even slightly comfortable spending. And that might sound stupid to some people, but I don't have nearly 2,000 fucking games because I paid full retail prices for them. I try to find deals, like stupid cheap deals, even if that means I wait a few years before I purchase a game that may have just came out. Look, I am not hurting to play the latest Call of Duty, or Kingdom Hearts, whatever game. I have a stupid large library of games, so I don't mind waiting. I got plenty of shit to choose from in the meantime. So for anyone who might think, wow, Foxy, you're a cheap ass. Yeah, you know what, you're absolutely right, but sometimes being a cheap ass has its perks. So hey, it is what it is. It sure beats the hell out of having no money in my account, right? Before I wrap this video up, I do have to apologize to everyone. You know, making these videos anymore is kind of a struggle, really. I can't find anything worthwhile anymore. And I mean, I've had issues with this sort of thing in the past, but some of the thrift stores and pawn shops closing down near me is making it just that much more difficult. Even just finding anything to talk about in any of these places is a struggle. So I apologize for the lack of content and for being more negative than I usually am. Hopefully when the COVID shit is mostly over and done with, things will change, but it's been over a year now since this whole thing started. So I don't know what to make of it, honestly. So with that, everyone, I really do appreciate all of you guys. That goes for subscribers, viewers, personal friends who watch my stuff. Thank you all for understanding and thank you all for putting up with my shit. I'm simply doing the best I can, and I really do appreciate all the love and support I have been getting. It's really cool, um, so thank you all so much again, and um, I hope to see you next time.